Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCU Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving my first iteration of the Leviah Shadowborn Abomination Hero, talking my way through my first kind of, you know, stab at the hero as a whole. I've never played the hero before the Demi Hero got released, so I'm super excited to share with you my thoughts on the hero so far and kind of where I'm going to be taking her on the channel. So if you like this type of content, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. If you're a long-standing supporter, y'all are amazing as always. Keep it up. Please feel free to join the Patreon or the Discord down below for access to a great community. We have over 400 members in the Discord. We have a couple members on Patreon, which is crazy. I always try to give my videos early to my Patreon members and then also discuss a lot of stuff in the Discord. We have daily discussions in the Discord. So please join that. And yeah, we'll get right into it. So... If you're new to the channel, this is not going to be a deck tech per se. This isn't supposed to be like a run this list type video. I feel like I have a, enough of an understanding to the hero to where this might give you a good starting point. However, if you want to get a really in-depth discussion on how to play this hero, go to Mansan's channel, go to Ethan's channel. It'll be linked down in the description below. Check out all his videos. He's the one to definitely go to for this stuff. For me, the reason I'm doing this video is, one, I do think this is a good starting point. But also, I'm going to be playing this here a little bit more in the near future. I'm having a lot of fun with her, so I want to introduce her to the channel and be able to talk about my thought process with her. And then as I go to armories and play her more, then we'll start getting more in-depth and having streams and having some fun stuff. So this is a Blood Rush Bellow list. I took inspiration, obviously, from Ethan, from uh, Mansan's channel, from Pat's uh, list that he just top aided at the Bow Hard in Cincinnati with. And I took a lot of the same core, and I do have some changes, and I want to talk about those. So we'll get into it and kind of go uh, card for card here for the equipment suite. Carry on Husk, enough said about that one. Most powerful equipment in the game block-wise. Insanely powerful card. We are using Claws because we are a Blood Rush Bellow list. Normally in Reinar, uh, for anyone who's aware, your Blood Rush Bellow turns, a good one is usually Claw, Claw, Swing Big, which is like 20 damage. Uh, that's your good turn. Your average turn is around 16 to 18 damage on, on Blood Rush Bellow. With Levia and with a lot of her one-cost six-attack uh, uh, cards, she's able to deal 18 to 20 damage a lot more consistently than Reinar is on Blood Rush turns, and she's even able to go up to plus 20, like 26 damage turns pretty, pretty, honestly pretty consistently. So Claws is help enable that plan, so we're running Claws. Scab Skin Leathers is the boots, and then Scaling Flesh Bag. This card is a huge upgrade. Uh, for Levia and for Reinar uh, being able to intimidate on the opponent's turn and really, honestly, in a good situation, it's basically a second husk. It'll get you five to six value, minimum four to five value, uh, and it's just really good against, you know, against Uziri, it's really good. It prevents her from doing her reaction. Really good against Rockney for the same reason. Really good against uh, Lexi for possibly stopping her second arrow if she only has one hand. Your opponent really has to play around it. And then the mirrors, this is even a funnier card because... When you have this up and the other Leviah has theirs up or Reiner has theirs up, it's like this chess match of when to use it because usually you're going to use it on the first Blood Rush turn, and it's just really fun to use. So that's that's the main board equipment. For sideboard equipment, we'll go through this here in a second, uh, but we'll go through this. We have Crown of Providence for the Jeremiah matchup. Uh, Fleshback isn't as useful in that matchup as it could be. Crown of Providence helps you get something. You know, sometimes you have to really, like, go all out with your hand and you have a unideal arsenal because of it and so crown province is good to help cycle a card out i um, also use it sometimes in uh heroes that really are gonna i use it in a rockney because he really challenges your arsenal a little bit more than other heroes do um you also can use it sometimes i use it in um in uh bravo as well because he doesn't really care as much but he you could hurt a pummel play potentially so definitely mainly for the jeremiah matchup though the other equipment tunic i have this for wizard uh i basically have a whole wizard package here i have tunic and ab3 with spoiled skull gloves and boots i think you're gonna see a little bit more icelander early on so this is kind of just like a meta call for me and then we have grasp of darkness and game Boy's gloves i run gloves mostly in every matchup except for darkness i run in lexi i run it in dory i run it in bravo and I'll even run it in a Rockney, so it all depends. Um, so that's the equipment. And then for the deck, it's similar. So the, what you're trying to do is you're trying to do a two-cost attack into a one-cost attack. That's like the simplest way I can describe it. You're trying to use cards like Dread Screamer uh, in order to 
give something or give itself go again by banishing a six from your graveyard. Basically, when you play Dread Screamer as an additional cost, you banish three cards from your graveyard. If a six or more was banished this way, it gains go again. So your ideal play is to block with a card and then play Dread Screamer into a one cost. So if you play a red Dread Screamer into a one cost attack, it's 12 damage off three cards, which is really good value. 12 damage technically off two attacks, uh, which is insane value. I mean, that's near Channel Mount Heroic Briar level uh, value. Um, off Yellow Dread Screamer, it's 11 damage. And off Blue Dread Screamer, it's 10 damage. So super good there. Most of the time, that's like the the height. The, the most you can possibly do off of a 2 and a 1 attack is a Red Dread Screamer into a Red Graveling, which gives you 13 damage. Super good value there. Uh, for only two resources and that's like the baseline line you're trying to do another line uh is simple stuff um you're trying to use art of war in order to give one cost go again or give two costs go again so doing art of war banishing like a slithering and playing a slithering for six go again into another one cost or a two cost so you're basically in most turns that are not blood rush bellow or art of, or major art of war turns you're dealing 12 to 13 damage and then what you're wanting to do is use those Blood Rush turns and push 18, 20, 24, 26 damage, even higher. I think the highest I've gotten is like 26, 24 to 26 damage uh, with Blood Rush Bellow turns. And like I said before, the difference between Blood Rush Bellow and Levia as opposed to Reinar is it's a lot easier to get those consistent 18 plus damage turns. 20 plus damage turns because of the lower cost curve for your six power attacks. Most of Reinar's cost cards in, in his deck, their six power are two to three cost. Whereas in this deck, it's pretty easy to get, get that for a lot less. So that's the baseline of the deck. I'm not going to go through every little play interaction, but that's, that's what you're trying to do. You also have one off cards like endless mall, which if it banishes a six will be a two card for nine, uh, being able to block with two cards and still come back at your opponent for nine damage is pretty insane rate. Uh, you have cards like Boneyard Marauder, which is a one cost six that could also turn off blood debt. Um, and then you have certain cards in here that I have that are two costs, but they're more, I use them as kind of like, oh shit moment cards is what I call them. So there's times in Leviah where you can't quite turn off blood debt the way you want to, uh, because you don't have like a go again engine or some way, you know, art of war, whatever it may be. And being able to play cards like Shadow of Blasphemy and Mark of the Beast, and just attack with them and basically turn off blood debt. Uh, Mark of the Beast is guaranteed, but Shadow Blasphemy and Deadwood Rumbler both give you the option to potentially do a two card for six and turn off blood debt, which is still good value. Um, another key card is Savage Feast, which I got from Ethan's list. This card is basically a Scabskins card or an Art of War card, right? Being able to banish something off Art of War, you have a Savage Feast, you draw into a Savage Feast, you play one for six, go again, uh, and draw a card. Most of the time, super good for that. Um, and yeah, like that's the baseline of what you're trying to do with lists. There's some cool interactions. Now Levi has access to Slithering Shadow P, which says if this was banished on from your hand this turn, you may play it from your banished zone. So if you banish it with Art of War, you can play it, uh, the card you just banished, which is really nice. If you um, banish it a different way, uh, you can still be able to play it. And it just it opens up more play lines for Levi. Um, we have Swing Big, which is just amazing value, and Beast Within. Beast Within has two things. The obvious use case for it is because it says if Beast Within was put in a graveyard from anywhere other than the combat chain, banish the top card of your deck, and you lose a life if this is a six or more put in your hand. So what this allows you to do is you banish it off Blood Rush Bellow, or you, you can discard off Blood Rush Bellow, even off a three-card hand. You pitch a card, play Blood Rush Bellow, discard the Beast Within, and then you draw one from Beast Within, and then you draw two from Blood Rush Bellows. So basically, you refill your whole hand. Super nice. But it also has a fun effect where there's a lot of discard effects in the game right now. Um, you have Widespread Annihilation now. You have Winner's Bite. Uh, you have Dead Eye Triggers. You have things like that um, where potentially Beast Within could be discarded or even Command & Conquer. If you Arsenal Beast Within and they Command & Conquer you and it gets discarded you basically refill the card that you just discarded. It basically replaces itself. So super nice for that. Um, and then getting into our blues. So there's a couple choices that I made that other people might not make. One, I'm running nine Dread Screamers, similar to what Pat, the call that Pat made in the Bowhard and Cincy. Um, Dread Screamers is too good of a card not to run, I think, a nine of right now. I think you want to be able to race people down. And having that constant play pattern of 
two cost dread screamer into one cost attack. It's just too good. Uh, and it's something that I want to keep doing. My other thing that's different for most people is a lot of people are only running like four to six graveling growls, usually at red and yellow. I'm running the blue. So the big difference that I've done in my testing so far, testing or really just playing the hero is I want as many one costs as possible. And the only six power blues are Deadwood Rumbler, Wrecker Romp, and Soul Harvest. Now, Diabolic Offering is a card that uh, Ethan's team's on and a lot of people are on. I don't like Diabolic Offering. Um, Diabolic Offering ceiling on offense is a one for six, which you already have 12 cards in your deck that are. Its floor on offense is a no block, well, I guess it's a matter of offense, but it's a no power blue that you use to pitch. Um, and it can really stunt your hand depending on how things are going. On defense, its ceiling is at block six. The problem is the only time you ever block six is if you're playing it off of Art of War defensively. If I'm playing Art of War defensively, I'm already in a really bad spot. That's the way I look at it. So the fact that it can block six doesn't really matter to me. Um, its floor on defense is it's a blue zero no block, which is already in flesh and blood in general, really bad. Um, so I ended up cutting the Diabolic Offerings and putting Graveling Growl. At worst, this is a blue pitch block three. At best, this is a one for five at blue off of like a Dread Screamer or off of Art of War or whatever it may be, so especially late game, playing a late game Art of War, um, drawing into a blue Graveling and being able to play it one for five, go again, and it's a blue. Super nice there. Um, my other blues, Convulsions, just amazing late game card. Honestly, having this, a blue and a graveling is amazing. Um, like if you have like a yellow graveling, this basically comes in as a one for seven dominate late game. Super nice for that. Deadwood Rumbler is a six power blue um, that also can turn off blood debt in a pinch. You have Doomsday and Soul Harvest, which are pretty common cards in, in Leviah as a whole. And then you have Reckless Thing and wreck a romp So all those are pretty standard for my sideboard. Um, I went over my equipment already. Uh, you actually have the Demi Hero. I have my recursion package in here with Deep Root Evil, Howl from Beyond, and Ghostly Visit that are really good because I think a lot of people are going to, as Levi gets more popular, I think a lot of people are going to try to move to fatigue her. So I think you're going to have to have that recursion package in. Command and Conquer is really good for obvious decks that it's good against. Um, it also has a good interaction with Howl from Beyond because Howl from Beyond can pump it up to nine, which is super nice. I've had that happen once or twice. And then I have a crack bobble in here because I don't know what my ADF slot is going to be. Um, I'm still working through that. So definitely leave in the comment below if you have a good suggestion for me for that ADF slot. But yeah, um, super excited with the list. I'm playing my first armory with it tomorrow. First time playing it in paper. So we'll see how many mistakes I make. I'll definitely report back this weekend on how my armory went. Good or bad, win or loss, I'll let you know. Um, and yeah, super excited to play the hero. Uh, excited to introduce it to the channel, see how it goes. Um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But yeah, if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If not me, it's totally fine. Go to our Flesh Blood Creator, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. Let me know what you think of the list, what you think is wrong, right, and different. It's fine. And I'll see y'all next time on TC Talk. Thank y'all so much.